Last week, I released a very popular video. It's doing really good. Thanks for your support. It's time to take a look on Stellar Studio. I did the latest mandatory upgrade, which is kind of like a scary thing, but it was very quick. By the way, I have my Dwarf 3 here mounted on the uh, Dwarf <laughs> Lab tripod. I had to go all the way to Las Vegas to go and get one. In order to use the Stellar Studio, you have to be connected also to the Wi-Fi using STA mode. And STA mode can be scary. I see a lot of people... Uh, it seems that it doesn't work for them. I made a video before about the STA and the possible solutions. So be sure if you can connect with STA, it may be permissions that you have to give all permissions, allow all uh, when you are going to do this STA. Okay, so before I start uh, uh, with the uh, Stellar Studio, I need to find out which one is which. Because I use different settings because I was testing, but let's say the first thing before you click here on Stellar Studio, just go ahead and click on one image and let's see where we are seeing this one. And then you go and click here on the bottom of the screen, you're going to see that I. So uh, now I get the information, posture time 50, game 20. Uh, and now I know which one I am using. Okay, so now I am going back to that album page. Uh, it says the Infinity Lab. This is where I am right now, uh, which is Task Infinity Lab. So now that I know this one is the 15 second exposure time gain 20, which is the last test that I did, I want to go ahead and click on Stellar Studio. And I am going to pick that very first image again. And this is the time to examine your images uh, or your image, as this is a stacked image already. Are the stars elongated? Uh, is the image too dark, too bright? Does it has a lot of noise? Uh, this way you can make a decision on what type of corrections you want to apply. And we have the four different modes. And I want to try first the auto. Uh, let's just go ahead and upload. And this will take uh, a little bit, sometimes a few seconds. Uh, under the task list. And here it is, the, the one. If you already process some of these images and you want to try it again, those corrections will be deleted and it starts all over again. In other words, if you already did a correction to an image and you like that result, go ahead and download it before you try again with a different setting because you will lose what you already did. Okay, so the process is done. Maybe it took two to three minutes. The process can take more than 30 seconds because this has to go to a cloud and process. Sometimes it's very busy as many other uh, cloud services that you can get. So be patient and let it finish. Star corrections denoise and enhances the background uniformity. The stars are not fully corrected. I don't think there is a way to fix that. So this is the original and after. So it is a dramatic change, but this one has everything. And this auto setting works really good for a lot of the uh, images and for other ones, I don't like it. I can like do maybe one or two at the most. So now if I go back again to my album and I wanna pick that image, the original again, I already saw that the start correction in this case didn't work that good. Let's just do a denoise only, okay? And now I have an original and after, which is the auto correction. And let's see what happens with the just the denoise. 
Okay, so the process was done and this was uh, pretty quick. So now I'm going to click here on the third one, which is just the denoise. So the stars definitely are still the problem. Trees down here, but we are tracking the stars, not tracking the trees. So that is it, it's going to happen if you have a building in front or something. That's why if you want to do a composite of the Milky Way, you need to photograph them separately. Those those beautiful images the, with the building sharp and the Milky Way there, uh, no, that is a composite. <laughs> they look amazing, but you have to put them together because it's one or the other one. I am back to my original. I would love to do the star removal and see what I get. So it's going to do the same thing. It's going to be added to the task list and we can kind of like uh, see it here. So let's just go ahead, process done. The same image, no star. This is an interesting effect with no stars. Obviously I haven't done any more editing on this one, but um, I think obviously the nebulosity stands out better, but this is all a matter of personal taste. So there's no wrong, good or so-so <laughs> results. So I got some interesting results. Um, I think my favorite was the denoise. The autocorrection, it all depends on your sky conditions, on the gradient. There's so many factors, the border level. I think the denoise did a pretty good job. Uh, so that's the one that I like the most. And also the starless image was good. I just need to edit it more. And speaking of editing, don't miss the second part of this video, which is going to be uh, some basic editing using PixInsight. And there you're going to see an amazing result for such a short imaging session. I mean, it's like night and day, literally, <laughs> uh, with the image uh, or the images. And also a quick editing using just Photoshop, some basic editing on camera raw filter. If you like my tutorials, Please join my membership program for, to get the PDF documents with all the settings and details of the tutorials. I am about to release a bunch, like literally a dump of... <laughs> of documents for uh, Pixing Side. I have some great cheat sheets for Cyril. And I am going to start also showing a little bit of uh, SETI Astro Suite. Be patient with me. It's a lot of work, but I finally figure out the best way to produce all of these documents. So you can just go ahead and click on uh, membership there on your screen and that will take you to the process and it's only three dollars and 99 cents a month that's a month uh, and you can cancel at any time I know you're not going to cancel <laughs> it helps a lot to keep this channel going a, li a little bit here a little bit there counts thank you so much for watching and stay tuned for the upcoming videos of the dwarf 3 and Dwarf 2 Telescope as I never forget about Dwarf 2.